So, Father God, we just invoke your Holy Spirit into this room, Lord. We thank you that Desiree and Jessica are using their gifts and talents. And, Lord God, continue to open doors for them, guests that they didn't think were attainable, make them attainable. Mm -hmm. And, Father God, you said if we would open our mouths, you would fill it. So, thank Father you, God, Lord. as we open our mouths, Lord, we ask that you would prepare the hearts, the souls, the mind, the will, and the emotion of the people that were here, whatever Jessica puts out. And, Lord, continue to keep Desiree on the cutting edge. Thank you, And, Lord, Lord, we just give you all glory, honor, and praise that your will be done this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, hey, thank God for another day. Hey, hey, I know we could be another way. Hey, pray, thank God for another day. Hey, hey, I know we could be another way. That's the cutting edge. The cut look. Yes. <laughs> uh, hey, we, don't, we, don't want, we want people to be trying to figure out what you're doing. Yeah. Like, how Listen, do that? come on. That's what we see. We come can't do on. things the same as everybody come else. On. Come on. If, if This is what I tell people. Well, let me quit because, see, we'll get started and then we'll. No, let's, I, I know okay. how to finagle through that. Let's go. So, this is what I tell people. We always look at rappers and all that and say, well, how they go from selling drugs to this and that. And we want to talk about them. Yeah. But if we have the Holy Spirit and God said he would lead God and direct us, yeah. then why ain't we doing just what they're doing and right. more? Because we have a, a cause that's worthy to be uh, moved forward. But we always want to look at other people and say, well, why they do it? Forget what they doing. Yeah. God, what you put in me Come so on. that I can move forward so that people will look to me and then I can lead them to you. Man, that's so that's so good because in um, I think it's Isaiah 43, 19, where it says, I, for I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And right. the, the problem is the perception and perception is reality for people and people only mm -hmm. operate in what's real for them. That's right. And if God is not real for them and what God is doing is not real from them, they're not going to act because they don't have the perception. Not at all. But before we get too deep, <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't Good know, already. listen, I think y'all done already seen the man of God. Y'all may not know who he is, but I know. And this man of, First of all, you have entered in a, it's a Just As the Podcast where we create a safe space for influencers to decompress, have fun, and just as it's your girl, Jessica S. Smith. And I would thank you for viewing this podcast, viewing this episode. Uh, y'all, y'all know what y'all waiting for. That's all right. 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 What's up, you guys? <laughs> Welcome into the space again. Listen, listen. That's all right. We know how to hit one. I'm, I'm a little scared of this already one. Open. He was. I'm I'm scared of this one because this when you get people like this on the other side of, of the table, fire. You hear me? So you you heard his voice already, but I'm about to put a name to it. Like this young man, young man, fresh man, chocolate man. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's my friend, and we've been friends for about a year now. And uh, God has really, really, um. Open my eyes to some new things in this relationship. I am I'm younger than he, and he is more mature than I am in spirit, spirituality, mentality, or whatnot. But he also he also shows me ways of where I am valued in in his life, and so I I appreciate him. This young man is a minister. He has he has worked with the NFL. He has you know he's just a boss. He's been in sales. He has so much just wonderful experience that is going to provide us so much wisdom on today and so i introduce to you guys on this platform none other than brent miller and then i forgot the k let me let me w brent k miller because hey, i go by jessica S. smith and i'll be like why y'all missing the s i need the s because it's jessica <laughs> smith is so plain so i feel you li listen hey because the k can mean king's kids come so on we can make it be whatever it want to be so come thank on you for that. brent how you feeling i am great i am i am just before we get started i am so proud of you oh, and don't just so sorry. excited <laughs> I am, and it's, it's just in a year's time yeah. to see your growth has been encouraging, so congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I'm proud of you because in the year's time, we've talked, and you've been through some things, but listen, just your faith, 
alone just like how you just get back up again and again and again and you go like literally you go with god like you are the prime example of going with god so let me i gotta tell (laughs) y'all i'm gonna tell this story i gotta tell y'all how i met brent okay so um y'all heard me say several times and brought up the podcast summit that was held in 2023 in miami florida and y'all i went by myself I went to this uh, place by myself. I had Greg and Desiree, you know, in my ear saying, okay, you need to do this. You need to have this note. Just holding me accountable. But I was there with, not with physical accountability. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. It's something about how God set you up to uh, for your come up and it, it, he he literally did. So I'm going around and I'm going I'm to let Brent tell some of his perspective. But I'm going around. I'm this girl with r- loud red hair. Um, I'm I'm just excited. Like I'm just so excited. And I think people could just see it because a lot of people were just attracted to me. They were just like, you know, speaking or hey, I want to do an interview with you. And Brent had been one of those people. And I thought it was just gonna be like a cute little interview with just gone by his day. Y'all can see it on. We gonna have to repost it. Yes. But uh, he did an interview with me there. I came. I didn't come prepared. I didn't know people was gonna do. That. All I had was my phone, my notebook, and a pen. That's about it. Cause I came to lot. I didn't know we were supposed to be doing all of this. And so, um, so Brent and I did the interview, and he asked me some great questions. I just liked his vibe. And so I remember, um, I remember um, just doing meeting him then. Mm-hmm. And there was another man, and he, I did an interview with him. And so uh, we all went to lunch, and it was just, you know, this unique opportunity. But I got to spend some one-on-one time with Brent after that. And, baby, the pour that he poured into me, baby, he, and he looked me square in my face. He said, listen, all these people are, are attracted to light. Everybody is attracted to light. You have to be mindful of who you allow to get close to you. He looked me square in my eye. I was like, Negro, I just met you. <laughs> I just met you. But it's, y'all, it shook me so much that I became sad. He was like, no, you finna come sit with us. You're not finna just sit anywhere now. And it was a level of responsibility that I felt from him that he, I was like, I don't even know him. But he was like, no, no, you're not doing it. And I was like, wow, God loves me so much that yes, he, he sent does. me a brand. Like what do you recall all of it? So I remember seeing you and, and you know, as you get older, your senses change Mm -hmm. and you start being more observant of certain things. So I was just watching the room and I watched how people was gravitating to you. But then I seen the one guy who went to lunch with us, how he was kind of acting. I'm like, okay, let me just kind of, you know, being the father of a daughter and Mm -hmm. have sisters, you look and you just be observant. So I'm like, okay, so then when we were walking and talking, then my radar really started kicking up because yeah. it's like, okay, I know she's a, a child of God. Mm. And everybody that says they know God, which God are you talking about? Because yeah. we know in the Bible they had the Greeks had gods for everything. Mm-hmm. And so when you start talking and I start hearing you, that's when I had to interject and pull you away because it was like I didn't need you, one, to get distracted but also somebody to start putting stuff in your ear. See, we got to be careful what we let people say to us because that's how a seed gets planted. If somebody's not there to be a buffer, people will say something. And then you'll start thinking, where'd my faith go? I thought God was this, but we allow people to just plant that. See, the devil is real sneaky. Like he just, he just drop a little something in your spirit. And if you don't get it out, it starts to fester and grow. And so we didn't need that happening to you because God has a purpose for you and we don't want that to be derailed. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm going to turn around on you. I'm going to turn around on you too. Desiree. Okay. I I don't know why I be setting myself up like this. Like you real t- like you did. What you did for me, Brent? Um I I don't think I've ever experienced that before i don't think i've experienced it since right um i have a brother right and i um and, and we ain't close close but right. we we in good standing <laughs> like we good. i don't know we good. Like good it's family family's we, we, always complicated we good, you know what i'm saying yeah. so we in good standing and so i've always if i could be honest i've always probably yearned 
for a level of protection like that. And the protection of, this is so good, the protection of a black man outside of my father, right? right. Caring for me in an unsexual manner. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I've ever felt safe with a man that I didn't even have an inkling. Like, I, when I tell you I genuinely haven't even thought, like, oh, Brent want the goods. I have never thought that because you your energy was like... Right. Uh, and maybe this too I'll open and honest for y'all But I'm keeping it real Like as a black woman And I'm not ugly You know what I'm saying Like all. I was bad I was bad walking was? through that the, the, Listen Oh okay what, do You you know them pants With the frizzles on there I was walking with them frizzles yeah, I, was I thought you was talking Jesus. about You weren't anymore That's why I was like was So you talking oh. back then okay. Oh no I'm talking about I'm I'm not ugly at, at all Like no, you know what I'm saying Like I'm saying that out loud Like I have to tell myself that every day Because there's some insecurities But we'll talk about that another day But I'm saying like And so <clears throat> so even in a simple fact that you saw you saw me as a child of God mm-hmm. and you protected that, why did you feel the need? Because to somebody that you did not know. Right. Like that's that's something that is a foundation. It sounds like it's something rooted in you. What is, what is that? And how do other men get to protect women? Like, like let's go there. Yeah. That yeah. talk like that. Because at that moment I needed protection that I didn't know I needed. Right. I, I think if we're really honest, we all have that thing. Mm-hmm. You all can look at a woman and be like, yeah, she's trying to set you up. Men do the same thing. But, and, and I'll say this, we sometimes don't want to go against the bro code or the sister code or what, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But see, this, this is where the adversary, once again, gets in. Because we, we set up these fictional guidelines that we don't even know what they're rooted in. Mm. See, I'm real big on where did things originate from. Come on. See, I uh, I have a friend, and we talk all the time, and he always say these cliches, when people show you who they are, believe them. But why when people show you who they are, you still deal with them? You told them a secret, and they keep telling it, but then you go back to them. The other one a lot of people say is, uh, everybody can't go where you are. Mm. And this applies to you. See, you have a heart for people. And people can see where you're going, and they may try to derail it, but because you have a heart for people, you try to take them with you, but they're not supposed to be with you because they can't enter into the places that you can enter in. And so it's so important for us as men to look out for women because when I see you, I see my daughter, I see my mother, I see my sisters, I see women, and so and my wife. And so I'm not going to let nobody do anything to them so why would I let anybody, and not that maybe harm, but just putting something in your mind that doesn't need to yes. be there. Uh, right. Treating you in an inappropriate way. One thing I don't play with is I don't hit like play hit with women, mm-hmm. call them out their name, because we have to remember, another thing, this is my, my kind of soapbox. Yeah. Nursery rhymes, sticks and stones they may break, break my, my bones, bones, but words may never hurt me. That's a lie. I can heal from a stick and stone. Mm-hmm. It's hard to heal from words. Yeah, that's And so I have to make sure that the words that I speak, speak life. They give hope and inspiration because if not, what are we doing? Yeah. If I can't uplift somebody, what am I doing? Yeah. And that's one of the things you uh, do. You are a coach, right? Do you yes, coach? I coach. Man, you can tell. Because, and I, I, I knew I was real because coaches have another level of wisdom, like understanding. And you and anointed ones, not not, not just ones that be like, come and take, get a badge and say, oh, I'm a coach now. I right. didn't got a book, so I got to coach you. You know, I'm talking about these people that have really been down through there. And so the word that just keeps coming up for me, Brent, is discernment. And it's like you, it seems like you have a strong sense of discernment. Can we go into what is, what is discernment and how do you grow in that? So first of all, we all have the ability to operate in the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So you have word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment. It's kind of like the information group. You have tongues, interpretation, tongues, and prophecy. And then you had gifts, healing and miracles. Okay. So when you operate, God gives us the ability to operate in anyone at any time we need to. Mm -hmm. My mother was strong in discernment. And so naturally it's going to be kind of inherent. Yeah. She could tell when people would lie because God was sure like a snake tongue when they talked. Oh wow. And so that was her way of discernment. But for me, God drops stuff in my spirit. And so I tell people, uh, whether it's church people, you've, 
to test the spirit. Because God says, try the spirit and see if it be so. Mm -hmm. So when you're leaving out the house, maybe every day you go left. Say, God, which way I should I go? And if he says go left, go right. You might get stopped by a train. It might be a wreck. So now you're developing that relationship to hear God. So discernment gives you the innate ability to see beyond what you see and to hear beyond what you hear. Mm. So discernment also, what I heard was discernment also ignites you to obey God. Because it's like people like, oh, do I hear God or how do I hear God? But then it's like you hear something or you feel something or sense something. That's so interesting. We're talking about this right now because me and my sister were just talking about it, like how she is experiencing God in different ways okay. and how she comes to it. In what ways outside of discernment do you experience God and have been developed in your faith? And, and this is something, that, and I'm glad you said that because this is something I just had to get over. See, we think the way I come to God is the way you come to God. Come My on. relationship with God is your relationship with God. Yeah. I have a very unique relationship with God, but I think it's, it's just because of my faith. And sometimes I tell people, just just do it or just pray and it happens and it don't. And I'm like, you know, then we become judgmental. Well, you didn't pray right or you didn't this. No, that's my relationship with God. And we as Christians have to quit trying to take our relationship and put it on somebody else because now I'm trying to say I'm your God and not God because I want you to be like me. But, mm. D. <laughs> he coming for everybody, Nick. He ain't just coming for mine today. He come. He said, "I I'm coming with the sword." Okay, I am coming with the sword, Brent. I'm telling you. So how you? How did you get to this point? Have you always been like this, as far as like so grounded in knowing who you are, or what was your developmental point oh, today? Heck no. <laughs> What they say, God, look Free out for people. fools and babies. Listen, Free the people today. Free the people. I, I was probably at the top of the food list. Let's go. But I had a praying mother. Mm. I had a praying grandmother. So they, they protected me. And, I, and this is stuff I've told my kids because what I'm going to tell you, I told my kids, I don't want my kids to grow up. I did not want them to grow up with an unrealistic expectation of life. I used to smoke weed. Mm -hmm. I used to snort cocaine. Wow. We used to drink, me and my buddies. They called us the AA, the academic alcoholics. We take a fifth of 151 light, chase it with a fifth of 151 dark, and chase it with blackjack. And that was every weekend. We would leave campus. Statue of limitations ran out on all this, so it don't matter now. But we would, <laughs> we would leave school at lunchtime, go get high, get something to drink, and go back to school. And so... God has allowed me to live through a lot of experiences, but I think that's where wisdom comes in is experience. So even when I do business coaching, I tell people, you have to put yourself out there. Mm. If you don't put yourself out there, you don't know what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. And so because of those experiences, it's given me a certain ability to be able to understand people. And I like to keep things basic and simple. I think sometimes people make the word of God, a relationship with God, business, and all that too complicated. Keep it simple. Man, you you talking, listen, you talking real good, Brent. So what was your pivot point? So you say you you was uh, the, the double A community. <laughs> <laughs> and this is some information I'm just learning, you guys. Yeah. So I'm like, whoa, hold up. I didn't know this. Yeah. But to like what I'm learning, uh, the people that are very rich oh, in let, spirit. Let me just say this real quick. Uh-huh. And this is all while, because I started going to church at 12. Right. Gave my life to Christ at 12. Mm. This was all while I was saved. This was high school. So I, what, 12 high school? You 16, yeah. 17, 18? So I just wanted to throw that so when we get to the pivot, you'll know how I pivoted. This is so good. This is so good. Because what, what I was about to say is one thing that I've noticed and God shows me in a pattern is that the people that are, have the mo most oil went through most hell and it's like their de their developmental uh, development story is so powerful and it's like oh that's why you so like i forgot i live and forgot i die like you gotta have those type of conversations of be grounded so much because it's like if i don't do this i know what i i will do mm -hmm. so what was the pivot point for you so for me one day uh me and my friends have some friends we've been friends for over <coughs> 45 years now mm. Those are my brothers. They're no longer uh, friends. Those are my brothers. Mm. And one day we was just sitting around and I just, something just hit me like, God put you here for more than this. And so for me, I was like, God, take the desire away. And at that point, I never smoked again, never snorted again. 
And and I take a shot every now and then, like with my kids. I you know I don't never profess to be above human. Yeah, that's and good. And so after I prayed that, God took the desire away, and never had a desire to do it ever again. And it was that simple for you. For me. Yeah, because I was about to say it's okay. We're gonna have a real talk right now. So there are certain things that I like. I've been told just like just you just got rid of it. Just you guys got to do, and it's like. Why does this keep coming up? Why do I keep facing this or whatever? So my journey, like, I love the fact that you gave us permission to have our own journey. Like, God gives us permission to have our own journey. And even though it's almost the scripture where it brings up where, who was that? Peter was like the thorn in my flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, this thorn in my flesh, I'm sick of it. But then it's like, no, I'm not going to remove the thorn because the thorn is what keeps you. keeps you human. Keeps me human, Mm -hmm. but also keeps you kneeling to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Keeps you honoring me. Keeps you bowing to me and serving and worshiping me not just from a sense of oh i'm over you but from a sense of i want to do relationship with you and this is how you right. press through that relationship mm-hmm. and so i love the fact that you open open that up i want to ask you a question i love Please your do. slogan i love your slogan you say remember to have a good day on purpose where did you get that from just i feel like you should be intentional about everything you do and so one day i was just doing something and it just hit me. And I know it was God because I, I try to spread positivity, you know, not fake positivity. Yeah. It's like real rooted and grounded positivity. And so my thing is people say have a good day, but a lot of times we don't tell people how to have a good day. So my thing was have a good day on purpose, be intentional about having a good day. And so what that means is I have to know what I want first to be able to get it. And a lot of times people will look at what you're I'm doing. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot the camera was right here. <laughs> My God. Hey, it's all good. Hey, that, that lets them know it's live and in living color. <laughs> and good. And look, and good. I keep on, I'm like, ooh, I, I'm, I'm feeling all of this. I wish I was writing some of this down, but I get to watch the replay. <laughs> <laughs> With your notes. Intentionality. Yes. The way we have to do intentionality is first knowing who we are. Mm-hmm. What keeps us from knowing us? Us. We, we, are, we are our own worst enemies. So, you know, I've, this is something I haven't shared with anybody except my coach. I was talking with my coach the other day because mm. a coach needs coach. Listen, and if a coach don't have a coach, you might want to be worried. Yeah. And so we were talking because I struggle sometimes with which lane. You know, everybody says you got to pick a lane. You got to pick a this. And when God gives you gifts, it's like, well, do I do this? Do I do this? And so I struggle with that. And so the only person that knows that I'm doing this now is my coach and you all. My lane is faith. And let me tell you why I chose faith. Because I do a thing called the prelude. Mm. The P is perspective, the R is reflective, and the E is effective. And I have them make a little book as I talk and they do this because I don't like motivational speaking because you live in Atlanta, you leave a motivation. By the time you get in traffic, all that motivation gone out. So <laughs> if you ain't cut somebody out, flip them right. all, they ain't there had two or three racks. Out the window. It's gone. <laughs> but I feel like activation, if you do this, when you get home and you open this little book up that you started, it should activate something in you mm-hmm. to remember what made you do it. So my platform is faith because, first of all, I got to have faith in me. And that's one thing my coach told me. She said, you don't believe in yourself because I'd be like, oh, what if I put it out there and nobody this? She said, you don't even believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. So how are people going to believe in you? So I have to start with me. I know God has given me faith. I know he's given me favor, but I have to exercise it so that other people can see it, so that it gives them the belief in themselves that they can do it. This this is so good. You said your platform is faith, and I, I'm glad you said that because <clears throat> um, a transparent moment is that for a long time, and Desiree, <laughs> I didn't know what I'm going to say. Uh, so my coach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now this is good. Y'all tune in. Let me hear this one. <laughs> said this before but it's the <laughs> listen we was on the, we was on a call and it was multiple of us it was like people that really like take heed to her mentorship okay and so um she was like y'all need to be doing something and uh started talking about how we need to do stuff or whatever 
And so she going down the line. I mean, all these people have all these amazing things. And she get to me. She was like, and just what are you, what are you selling? Like, she was like, you know what you just need to do? You need to sell Jesus. I looked at her and I was so mad. I when I tell you I was mad, Brent, I was so mad. And the reason why I was mad is because I felt like it was putting me in the box, put me in a box of where I couldn't right. do other things, right? I did not know that. Cause, cause I got what she was saying, mm -hmm. but I was just like, no, nah, I don't just want to do that. I don't want to just be known for being a Christian. I don't want to just be known for doing X, Y, and Z, not knowing what God was going to do with my platform. Right. Right. And so, so I, it's almost, I, I'm still a little ashamed to say this. It was almost like I was embarrassed or not necessarily embarrassed of God, but just being nah, known you know, that's real. for just this one thing because people are intimidated by it. And then on the flip side, when you're going and just being real, when you're going, uh, I won't say against, but having these dialogues with, with people like that don't really believe in the Bible to pick and choose like intentionally on what believing what word they're going to do, right. what they're going to live out. Um, they, they put you in this box and say, okay, you can only be a, be Christian and look like this and do this. Not knowing that I was going to, uh, I was made and built to buck against systems. Right. And so like, did you have any like experience where he's like, no, maybe I don't want to talk too much about faith because everybody's not comfortable. Did you ever have that? And how did you break through oh, that moment? Definitely. I think as a, a Christian, you always have that internal struggle because like you said, the perception of what a Christian is or was. Yeah. And see, I've never been a traditionalist. My, my whole life as an adult, I've done things my way. Mm. I, I don't like uh, tradition. I don't like routine. I don't like the establishment, so to speak. I want to live life on my terms. Yeah. And so to be able to do that, you have to know, first of all, who you are. It goes back to knowing you. Yeah. I know what I will do and won't do. So doing that, but then going into, you know, my mind racing, I forgot what you just asked me. Lord, help me. Did you have a, um, a what felt about being in a box? Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. So I did, but then I had to realize you can put me in a box, but I'm going to break out of it because everything you think you know about me as a Christian, I'm going to challenge your beliefs. I was just teaching Bible study uh, two weeks ago, yeah. and I told him, I want to challenge you. There's a thing called the lullaby effect, yeah. where you've heard something so long you never pay attention to the details. When you start reading the Bible for yourself, and you start seeing details. So I preached uh, in Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking about Moses and the children of Israel. And when they got to the Red Sea, and they were complaining about you brought us out here to die and all this. And Moses was talking to God. Do you know what God told Moses? What? He said, stop praying and get moving. Yeah. See, we always want to pray about it. Lord, what should I do? What should I do? God already told you what to do, but you ain't moved. So why are he going to give you the next step? And you waiting for him to lay out this 20 step plan when you ain't even took the first step. Listen. And so when people try to put the brakes on you, wear them out. <laughs> wear their brakes out. I'm going to wear y'all out. Come I'm on. on. This is, this is. So before you say that, this is my pastor in Cincinnati told me this and I love it. He said, if two of us are just alike, one of us is unnecessary. See, I can't be nothing but a second rate Jessica, but you can be a first rate Jessica and everybody can try to emulate you, but they can't. In business coaching, I tell people, people always say, don't tell people your business idea. I'll tell you one, you didn't come up with it. So you can only replicate what I told you. Mm. And even if you did, it still wouldn't be me. What does McDonald's sell? Hamburgers. What does Wendy sell? Hamburgers. What does, who else? Burger uh, King. Burger King. Ham so they all doing the same thing, but people go to each one. For different reasons. Yeah. And this is this is so good. So even just being like, something, just knowing, knowing that something might be similar, but it's not the same. Exactly. Like, just the power in that transition. Like, it, that's why, that's why when people say, um, like even the podcast, everybody got a podcast. I, when I say it makes me cringe when people say that mm -hmm. to me, it's like, oh, everybody got a podcast. No, you just know a lot of people that's pursuing it. Right. Like everybody don't have no podcast. That's a lie. <laughs> that, 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 but that part is a lie. Right. And so even if I do have a podcast, my podcast is different. And, I, I, and I've had people come on here and say, oh, this is so different. Um, it, I get to flow or I'm not, I don't feel like X, Y, and Z. Like mm -hmm. it's different because it's me. That's right. 
like my like my light is different. Your mm-hmm. light is different. And so where my <laughs> My brother-in-law, Desiree, called me gullible the other day. And this story that I just said earlier reminds me of what he said. Because, as he said, you open yourself up to everybody. You're such a people person. As you go up, you want to take everybody. But you need them folks that be like, nah, fam. This this is Brent. That's his lane. I wouldn't like that. And not for myself. I might be like that for other people, but I, not for myself. And so we have to appreciate this is so good. We have to appreciate our portion of light and our portion of salt. That's right. Because all of us are called to be the same thing, but different portions. This is so good. <laughs> well, well, think about this. We both have done sales. Yeah, we have. People buy from people they like. I worked at a company and when I went to sales, I struggled at first because I kept trying to do it their way. Mm. I pulled out my secret weapon. I printed off all my uh, prospective customers and my current customers. And every morning I prayed over that list. Mm. Those that had business would increase. Those that had canceled would come back. And those that hadn't uh, signed on with us that they would. And I prayed over that every day. And then I would start at the alphabetical order A and I would reach out to everybody. And they was like, you got to make phone calls. You got to make phone calls. No, I'm not making phone calls. I email. So when I start doing good business, one quarter, 126% ago, 124%. And it's like, you need to make more phone calls. I said, why? Well, because you got to make phone calls in sales. Am I not hitting my goals? Am I not leading the team? See, you want me to do it your way, wow. but that don't work for me. Yeah. And so when we try to do things the way we see people do them, we don't, we're not as effective as God wants us to be. Yeah. See, God created each one of us. We always say, I know the plans I have for you. And I knew you before you was even formed in your mother's womb. Then why I keep trying to make you like me if we know God created us different? Now, what the love we have for God can be on the same level. But the way we express that love can be totally different. That's so good. You just, you just said something that just... That just blew my mind. And I'm trying to go back to the exact way you said it because it's like, I feel stuck on the fact that you said it. <laughs> like, you want me to do something the way you taught me to do it because that's how you learn. But that's not how I evolve. Mm-hmm. That was the synopsis of what you just said. And I think that's so profound because... That's where the box come in. Sometimes people place us in the box, but a lot of times we place ourselves in the box. Oh, everybody else is in the box. Let me in the box with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because this world teaches us that it's only a one way of doing something. And it's my way of doing it. It's almost like cooking. Like you can get on TikTok. One thing I do, because Brent, I I gotta be prepared for this husband when he's gonna show up. (laughs) And so I didn't like trying to cook and stuff. And so Laughing, I was trying to cook and stuff. So, and I used to cook when I was a child, but I stopped. Look, I cooked out because it was necessary for me to right. cook for me and my me, my dad, and my my sister. But I stopped there for a while because it just felt like you know just draining. And I'm trying to get the energy to do that again. Well, your girl been cooking and TikTok been helping her. Okay. And so one of the things I practice is that I look at multiple videos. Mm-hmm. For the same type of recipe I'm looking for. Okay. Right? So I might say I might do a baked chicken or fried or my fried chicken mean now. Oh, go to TikTok. I learned how to take a few. I'm like, I don't like that about that. Right. And that's how I love this idea because it allows me to look at what people have done and evaluate what I like. Take everything that I like from what people have done and incorporate my own thing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I, I think I feel like I got frustrated with the art of cooking. Okay. Was because I was trying to be just like this recipe. Mm-hmm. I was trying to execute just like this recipe. But now that I know what I like, what season, I don't like this. I don't like mushrooms. So I'm not going to put mushrooms <laughs> in my in my ingredients. Right. When I get mushrooms, you might get something else. You know, you might get cream of chicken. <laughs> 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 but the whole point of saying that is that you are so right that we have to stop putting ourselves in these boxes so that we can evolve with God. Think about this. We allow people to put us in boxes, but we close the lid. Mm-hmm. Because they can put us in, but we have the ability to step out. 
when we don't, we're basically closing the lid and saying, I surrender to your thoughts of me, your perception of me, and the way I should do things. Now, the other thing you just said was you go to TikTok and you look and learn. To me, that's nothing but Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. Mm. You're looking at what somebody's doing and it's giving you skill set to do what you do. That's so good. That's so good. But and that's why we got a lot of dull people. With the, with the, now, see, we, we would have to do a series if we got on that. Because I'm going to tell you, Christians, I don't even want to associate with some of them. Tell the truth. Like, but tell the truth. Thing, think about this, though, Jessica. Everything has evolved as it should. God caused everything to live and to reproduce. Some of the Christians I watched growing up, I pray to God they never reproduced nothing. I mean, nothing. And that's just me. And I, I, I'm honest. But when God says, I'm doing a new thing, why do churches keep wanting to go back to the old thing? Yeah. There's a book I read called Mind Shift. He says, when you fight for your traditions, you sacrifice your youth. When you, sac when you fight for your youth, you sacrifice your traditions. I'm all for sacrificing traditions. Traditions keep people bound. Man. So we don't we don't want people to be bound. Jesus said he came to set all captives free. All of them. And when I say all of them, I mean all of them. them. Shoot, and even if you take that same script scripture, people don't think that they're they're self captivation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you see. Because when I think about because what the Lord has really been dealing with me in this season, okay. right, is that I, the outside factors won't alter to my inside factors be, have been dealt right. with, right? And we, it's so easily said, but I can talk about all the captives around me, but I'm self-captivated. Like I got, I'm, I'm, I'm arrested in inwardly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I am, I am um, boxed in inwardly. I am bound inwardly. And so when I don't do the inward work to where I allow God in, that's mm -hmm. the only way I can really do the inward work. We try to say, um, you know, put it all on people and then not seeing the change. And I'm like, well, where, this is something I said on live the other day. I said, where is God? Mm -hmm. We look at situations and we're like, oh, with this thing, this thing, this thing, God, where are you? It's almost a, a, a role switch right. of how he searched for Adam because he wasn't in a proper place. Hey, God, I'm not, I'm not seeing you come, come out. Right. I'm not like, and people are afraid to announce that they have moments like that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love this conversation. So I want to get your business. Yes, ma'am. Come on. <laughs> this the NFL it keeps coming up. So mm -hmm. what did you do with the NFL? So I am currently I have two clients. Uh, one played 15 years in the NFL, mm -hmm. and the other one played 11. So uh, personal assistant, executive assistant, you can call it. So. Sometimes the best way to describe it is I'm them so they don't have to be. So, That's give, you, so good. give you a little backstory. So, yeah. like I told you, I've never liked tradition. So, I had uh, two brothers. One worked at a car lot. One did sports marketing. And so, one of their clients needed his car detail. And I like detailing cars because mm -hmm. I like to see things change. So, detailing their car. Then from there. <laughs> you keep speeding these bars, bro. Right. That's what I'm here for, right? <laughs> to drop knowledge? To drop knowledge. You're dropping it. And so I asked them if there was anything else they needed done. So as they became more comfortable with me, and this is where character comes in, because Come people don't understand character can take you places and keep you there that something else can or can't. So because of the character they see to me, I would go pick their parents up from the airport, bring them to the games, have keys to their cars, homes, and everything while they're gone. And so from there, it kept going. So at this time, people was like, oh, you just want to be a flunky for the athletes to chase women, this and that. And I'm like, I don't chase women for nobody but myself. And so at that point. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I just called me. He said, I don't chase women for myself. Okay, keep going. I'm so tickled. And so they both made the Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. And that's when it was in Hawaii. So they flew me to Hawaii. All expenses paid. Were well, they on the same team? Uh, yeah, they oh, played okay. the same team. Wow. This is when I was in Cincinnati. Okay. So uh, they flew me to Hawaii. All expenses paid for a week. Stayed at the hotel with all the players. 
And a lot of people talk about my wife because they were going to fly her to Hawaii so we could spend time in Hawaii. And she would not leave our babies. They were probably 10 and 9 or something like that. They weren't babies. They were children. Let me tell you something. <laughs> my, I, I thank God, and, and this is for both of you all. Mm-hmm. God gives you a little bit of what you want, but he gives you everything you need. Yeah. In a mate. My wife is everything that I need. Mm-hmm. And that need becomes my want because I desire what she has that God has given her for me. Wow. You just took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> he just took a turn. He took a turn because, oh, Jessica, you are not crying today. I want to be a wife. Like, I, I do. So it just, just seems so hand. difficult. Like, it just seems so difficult. And I don't, I don't know. Mm-mm. Okay, great. I'm just going to just get the camera off me. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's a couple of things about wanting to be a wife. Yeah. And remember earlier we talked about things people tell us and, and they, they drop in our spirit? Yeah. So when someone says someone's not going to change me, because sometimes you hear people, male and female, say, well, when I get married, some, they're not going to change me. Yeah. The mere fact that you live alone right now and have to share space with somebody, you got to change. Yeah. So that's it, it seems subtle, but it's still a mindset. See, the mind, the, the great thing about the mind that God gave us is it's better than any AI out there. What you plan in your mind, the mind will start to move forward with it. Yeah. That's why people, when you hear people talking about they want to, whatever it is they may want to do. They may not have the ability, but because the mind says, oh, you want to do that? Let's go forward with it. And that's what happens. The other thing about marriage is sometimes people put so much pressure on themselves that I have to be married by this date and this yeah. date. I was talking to one of my clients the other day, and this is why, and this is another reason God told me to speak on faith. You have to believe, one, that you're enough as you are, whether you cook or not, because I don't cook, and my wife loves to cook. But I like to clean. So she cooks, I clean. That works for us. Mm-hmm. For a person that wants to be married, you have to just say, God, I'm going to be who you call me to be. Help me to do what you call me to do in the way that you call me to do it so that the person that's looking for me will find me. Mm-hmm. See, a lot of times we don't put ourselves in position to be found or we feel like I'm still working on me. None of us are a finished product. Mm-hmm. You have to be you. And allow God to do it. Now, this is some game for my brothers. Talk we, more. We have gotten away from what a man is. See, one thing I learned about, and, and, we'll, and we'll touch on this just a little bit. See, everybody wants the intimacy, the sexual part of it. Yeah. But see, for a woman, it's mental. For a man, it's physical. That's why men can cheat so easy. Because there's to them, there's no attachment. It's, she look cute. She look this. I've got to have her. Yeah. And so they go after that. But a woman, a real woman, is love and nature. So what that means is when I get up in the morning, I tell my wife I love her. If she goes out before me or however that goes, you send her a text or email. When she gets to work, she sees another message from you. You send her some flowers just because. I'm priming the pump all day long. Mm-hmm. By the time she gets home, she just as ready as I am yeah. for the intimate part. But we don't feed that part. So I was at a college one day and just kind of building a little context. And we were having a discussion about relationships. Yeah. And a lot of girls said, oh, the man only want the girls with the booty and this and that. I said, but let me ask you this. They said, what about the brain? I said, when you see a car, do you say that car drives good? No, you said that's a nice looking car. That's so good. Now let me drive it to see how it drives. Now I know what I like and don't like about it. So if you're not presenting yourself in a way that's attractive because you're worried about stereotypes and all that. Yeah. Why would a man even approach you? Mm-hmm. When we did my youth group, I did, I've done two different youth groups. And one in Cincinnati was called Leaders of Tomorrow a lot. Yeah. And the one in Atlanta was Students of Excellence. My wife came and she talked to the young ladies about their hair, their makeup, their dress. That next Sunday, you should see them girls. And it was uh, ages 12 to 18. They came in there with their hair done. They it was on point. But now... You see people out in bonnets and rollers and house shoes and pajamas. And you talking about you want to find an athlete? 
Girl, he ain't studying you. You know, that's the thing that gets me is people, you have, there's a thing called, we always hear cause and effect. Yeah. But we want to do effect and cause. See, if Jessica dresses the way that Jessica wants to be approached, that's going to cause a man to approach her in the manner she wants to be approached. Mm. When we come out looking any kind of way and a guy talks to you any kind of way, yeah, he should have a little more respect, but what are you advertising? What are you putting out there of how you want to be approached? Yeah. That, and you you know, you're going to make some folks mad saying that. And I'm like, it's so old school, but no, it's really, it's really the truth. And, and it goes back to even, like I said, even like I said, with our relationship, our friendship, of how you approached me. Mm-hmm. It was more, it was not, not trying to speak game, but this is something worthy of protecting. Oh, I'm about to cry. <laughs> like, nice. This is something worthy of protecting. So stay in the realm of you and your wife. How, have y'all always been that way? <laughs> am I going somewhere? Am I going mm-hmm. to, so what's the, what's the, at what point did you learn how to value her? I don't know. I ain't there yet. I'm still learning. Mm. Now that's real. That's real. So quick story. We were married, two kids, and I'm very bullheaded, very stubborn. I can be very arrogant. Uh, God's working on me. And when you say people are going to be mad, I can care less. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm at the point in my life where you you ever had the grandmother or somebody when they got old, they just said whatever they wanted to be like, grandma, you can't say <laughs> you, you She said, I can say whatever the I <laughs> want to say. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, we went through a little rough patch and my wife was like, we should take a break. Me and my, all my infinite stupidity said, I don't take breaks. Either we work it out or we don't. So we got divorced. Mm-hmm. So we were divorced about mm-hmm, two and a half, maybe close to three years. Mm-hmm. And so when people would say, why did you all get divorced? Oh, she this, she that. And God be like, you ain't there yet. Because I, I wanted to reconcile because I miss my family. And when I would say she, God's like, you ain't there yet. So people ask, what happened? Oh, we this. God said, you, you're making a little progress. When I got to the point and said, it's me, I was the one that wasn't acting like I was married as far as, because I played uh, semi-pro football at the time and church, you know, hid under the auspices. I got to be at church every time the doors open and not home with my family. Mm-hmm. She felt like a, a single married woman. And so once I said it's me, then God opened the door for us to reconcile. Now, let me tell you how God did it. I, I love how God set us up and do things. Mm. So at this time, the Bachelor TV show was just now on TV, yeah. the first season. Cincinnati was doing a little spinoff of Cincinnati's Most Eligible Bachelors. Yeah. I had a friend that worked at the chamber, and they called her and said, we need one more guy. Do you know anybody? Why she called me? She knows a lot of people. She called me. I happened to be off that day. So I put on a suit, went down, and walked through their studios, kind of like it was my office because I worked at the bank. And so that night on TV, they ran Cincinnati's Most Eligible Bachelors. Yeah. Well, guess who's seen it? My wife, all her girlfriends, everybody. And she said her phone was blowing up. I'm like, I know you ain't going to let somebody get brand after you done put all that work in. So God, once I got to the point and said what my issues was, forget whatever she may or may not have done, my issues in a relationship God opened the door for us to reconcile. And so we've been married now 20, over 20 some years wow. after the first marriage. So That is powerful. So that even gives people hope that are like in that state of separation. Like, cause you said it was three or four years. We were separated about two and a half to three years. And y'all had legally divorced? Yeah, we were divorced. She, uh, they took her maiden name back and everything. So. Oh, wow. So she was like, see, so y'all didn't think, you wanted it, but y'all didn't think that y'all would get back together. Yeah, because she said, no way. When I when I would even approach her about it, she'd be like, nope, nope. And it took God to work on me to get to where she would even consider. Wow. Okay, he just okay. We took a hard turn, but that I think okay to say that was so good and so neat, and I, I believe that somebody would hear that and have hope because especially after COVID, like people people either getting married or divorced. Right. <laughs> In twenty twenty, you saw a lot of rings and a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> the little thing no, but we just did like, like we're not being, we're not married anymore. And so um 
I love the aspect that you you create. You just created hope for people. And so I don't want to negate that we we was on your NFL story. So she didn't want to go to Hawaii with you guys, yeah. and you were in Hawaii. Okay, that's where you left. That's where you left. So off. hold that thought because I might add one more thing to. Oh, the, the, so the thing is, both sexes need to think about what's important to them. Mm-hmm. See, a lot of times I I tell my kids I'm over almost in favor of arranged marriages, and I can see why people do it. Because see, if I'm picking for you, I don't care nothing about how tall, dark, and handsome yeah. or what the body look like. I want to know what's in your heart. I want to know what your background is, what your family like, what kind of issues may arise because of this. And so I'm picking based off of that where you're picking based off of this. How much money does he make or yeah. she make? Where does she live? Does she live here? You know, I love TikTok. I, I, I resisted it for the longest because I'm like, it's I did. silly. I did. But that's because only people were looking at silly stuff. Yeah. You can look on there and find whatever you want. But there was one, and I, it makes me laugh. There was a girl, she got in the car with a guy. And she's like, before we go on this date, can I ask you some questions? She was like, is this your car? He was like, yeah. Do you live with your parents? No. Uh, do you have a good credit score? Yeah. Do you have a job? Yeah. She said, okay, we can go. He said, let me ask you some questions. Do you have a car? Well, no, my dad's trying to help me get one. Do you have a good credit score? Well, no, I'm working on that now. Where do you live? I stay with my parents. He reached over, opened the door and said, this date is over. Wow. I let her out. So I say that to say, if we base our potential mates on a certain standard, if they turn that standard back to us, will we meet it? Mm-hmm. Just so good. Okay, so now we'll go back to the NFL. Now, yeah. you love this hard yeah, switch. Yeah. Like, no, but but you that's a that's a real question because sometimes I even have to ask myself that. Like, am I the woman that I would like for my for my mate to be? And sometimes it scares me. Because I but I also don't want to get stuck in the idea of that I'm not good enough to be in a marriage. because I, I know that there's so a certain level of development there. Does it really good? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the space. But um, yeah. Okay, so now we have this hard switch. Uh, so wife didn't want to go to Hawaii because yeah. so she was watching the kids, but you mm-hmm. went there, and what happened? Uh, got a chance to meet a lot of guys. Uh, took pictures, and it was just a great experience to be in Hawaii. So they both went to the Pro Bowl again the next year. Yeah, went for a whole week again. Invited her out. She didn't want to go, but that's one thing I love about my wife. She is a mother through and through. Mm. And, you know, a lot of times you hear people talk about baby mama drama and all that. Not an issue. So it was good for me to know that I could leave and that my kids were good, that she was good. And when I came home, you know, it was like I had never really left because she did a lot. She held the house down. And I think a lot of times we don't give women the credit they deserve being a stay-at-home mom. And I think during COVID, a lot of guys found that out, like staying at home with the kids all day is not a picnic. Yeah. Especially if the wife had a job that like a nurse or a doctor where they were considered essential and had to leave. And maybe he was in sales and he had to stay home, trying to get on, on Zoom for school and all this new stuff. A lot of guys found out that, hey, this is, this is a full-time I'm job in itself. Full-time job. And so we have to learn to respect each other. And what I mean by that is the sexes. Because society will have us uh, trying to make each other equal and all that. And this is a conversation a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. But for me, I don't want you to be equal to me. I want you to be who you are. And if we're matched perfectly in some areas and equal, fine. But I don't want a woman that's like me. I don't want somebody that's can be hot-headed and bull-headed and all that. And I and that's not um, in regards to a sex, but a personality type. And sometimes we're looking for people that are just like us or have similarities, which are cool. But I think when you're really looking for a mate or a guy's really looking for a woman, he's looking for somebody that can compliment him. Where am I weak that she's strong? Because now if we're together, I know you got my back. And I got yours. So these are just some of the things that we have to look at when we're choosing a potential mate, not just the physical part of it. And that's and that's right. I think I'm. I'm not gonna say that. I'll tell you. Say it. Ain't nothing came up. Look, so my sister, my sister told me she was like, "Yeah, you don't really care about looks. I do care about looks, but I, I'm at a point where um, 
I really care about the heart and the desire. And I think maybe, I don't know if this sounds selfish or not, but I really, I really do want someone to take care of me in the way I need to be taken care of. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not somebody that doesn't like the work or doesn't want to go after right. and doesn't have anything going on. But how I feel like it right now in this place, it's hard for me to find someone or to speak to people um, whether they just only want, you know, right. um, Virginia and then, or they can't manage, you know, my progression in every other mm -hmm. field. And it's like, I don't know if I'm honest. Lately, I've been weary of that. It's just like you know what? It'll happen when it happens, just to deflect. Right. Well, the looks thing is whole totally subjective because what may be attractive to somebody may not be attractive to somebody else. Yeah. But the one thing I think, as we get older, we realize I'm not the same size I was when me and my wife met. Mm -hmm. So your looks are going to change. Yeah. People's physical shape and appearance is going to change. We just have to make sure that there's something more sustainable, like you said, the heart, the mindset, the love that will carry us through the physical changes. That's so good. That's so good. Man, we didn't we didn't follow the yellow ring road with this one, Billy Ray. He said I'm okay to go. It's like he said, I'm okay with whatever lane we go I'm I'm hop, I'm hopping on one but baby he Man, Brent then 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 dropped some gems today, Desiree. What what was your biggest takeaway, girl? Um, I think just the I just love how how free he is to be himself. I know. You know what I'm saying? And and I, when I when he was talking about how we all learn differently, it made me think about when I was in cosmetology school. I went to Paul Mitchell, the school in Birmingham, and on our name tags, we had to take these tests about our learning styles, right? Mm. So where you're like visual kinest, you know kinesthetic with your hands or audible whatever that is and they and we had to put they put our they labeled us on our name tags they labeled it on it they put how you learn on your name tag so that as the instructor is showing you things or as the instructor is teaching you know a haircut or a coloring technique they can look on your name tag to make sure that you're getting it. Like, wow. oh, let me make sure. I know you. I know your. I know your kinesthetic, which is hands on. Let me. Right. Let me allow you to come up here and do it yourself. That kind of thing. Or I know you're audible. Let me make sure I get you the audio of this X, Y, and Z. Right. Mm. And so that's just kind of feel like how um, how we are in life in general. Like being okay because I struggle with this too. Yeah. Like when you're, especially when you're around gifted and anointed people you know, trying to make the thing that God gave you look like theirs. And yeah. the truth of the matter is that it doesn't. So we have to just be okay with what God has given us and how and, and how he's given to do us. Matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, we had prayer, and uh, my pastor, <laughs> you know, she got this long line. She praying over everybody. Da -da 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 -da. So she get to me, and she say, accept God's plan, path. Not his plan, accept God's path for your life. And I'm looking like, Now you just shunned over everybody else, but I don't get no shunned That's it. But it, but it was so right on point because, you know, like, I'm, I'm accepting, like, okay, I know God got a plan for me, but I also have to accept how he wants to do it. Like, I had to get out of my own way and trying to help him, you know what I'm saying? And it, I just have to, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. So it was just so freeing just to hear, you know, um, that he, he's just who he is. Yeah. And, he, and he's so cool with it. So, and very. So cool with it. Just like he told me where we going after this. Yep. <laughs> That's what he, he asked me not one quote. This is what we're doing. No. And this is, yep, this is and gave me flexibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can we can do what you want to do, but this is what we're doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brent, I'm so grateful for you. Like, oh, likewise. Like, grateful for you. Something else you've done for me, and I'm going I'm to give you an opportunity to say some final words, but something else you did for me when I met you is that you pulled on my gift and taught me how to teach my gift. And it was like, and you saw the willingness, but then you came back and almost in like a coaching manner and said, oh, I'm going to give you feedback on how you did with me. That put a level of boldness in me because somebody of your stature, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that looked like, man, he's so wise. He got it. Like, uh, you know, you just, for me, you're it. For me, you're it. And when you ask me for help and you say hey I don't understand this that's another thing I love about him like he's like hey I don't understand how to do this how can you teach me can I get on your calendar 
Can I get on your calendar? Can you teach me how to do this? And we learned it was TikTok. It was uh, how to do reels. And you taught me a uh, cap cut. Cap cut. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we we took off with that. And you would have thought I gave him a million dollars the way he responded to me. He was like, Jess, this is so amazing. Like, thank you so much. It makes sense. And it just, it gave me the confidence that I needed. So I just want to say thank you. You're such a well-rounded person. Thank You're you. a well-rounded friend. And I'm just thankful that God, you know, has get, given us the journey, this journey together. And so I, in every episode, I give people the opportunity for final thoughts. So if there was anything, if they didn't hear anything that you said today, mm-hmm. what is one thing that you would leave the viewers? Have faith and believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that we get accomplished without faith. We get in our car and believe it's going to drive us to where we need to be. We believe we're going to arrive safely. It's the same thing with your life and your journey. You have to have faith that what God put in you is what is needed at this time in earth. We could have been born at any other time in earth and society, but God chose to deposit us here. Now it's the time for him to get a return on his deposit. Make sure you do what God called you to do. Make sure you do what God called you to do. <laughs> Brent, I love you, man. I love you, too. <laughs> and and I, I'm offended about one thing. Oh, what? You call me a friend. You my sister. I, how you going to call me a friend? My bad. They're my bro. Thank you. They're my bro and them. They're my bro. <laughs> That's my brother from another mother. We got the same daddy, though. <laughs> 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 all right Desiree man this is a good one I love you t- I love you love you y'all man like comment and subscribe baby because this one we want it we want to hear your feedback on this one but until next time remember life could be much more simple if you just ask